Today we're going to talk about the Nike Vomero 14 after 100 miles. Ten point zero miles, eight minutes, twenty nine seconds per mile today. Logging another treadmill run. We had temps in the teens today, about negative ten degrees or so Celsius, and I'm still kind of kicking the last bits of this cold. So rather than risk uh, a day out in the cold and making things worse, I decided to hit the treadmill again, which is where I did spend a lot of time in the Vomero. 14, but in addition to a lot of treadmill miles, I was able to run a variety of distances and paces to get to the 100 mile mark in this shoe. Uh, everything from a shorter run of three miles to a longest run of over a half marathon distance for a tempo or interval run, uh, and a variety of distances in between. This shoe ended up being one of the favorites that I've run in in a long time for longer steady runs. So if I had a 10 mile r long steady run coming up on my calendar, this is the shoe that I would probably reach for. Uh, compared to the Pegasus, a lot of you guys have been asking about that because some of the stats of this shoe are that it has full length zoom air pocket, just like the Pegasus. Uh, but instead of the Cushlon of the Pegasus, it's got React foam in it, making it nice and soft for a very comfortable ride. I think ultimately that the Pegasus is more like a two-door coupe version versus a grand touring version of the Vomero. The two-door coupe of the Pegasus is great for things that are a little bit more nimble, uh, a little bit quicker, or a variety of paces. This one is really for getting up on the highway, putting it in cruise control, and just going. Uh, so you could definitely get up to speed in this, but I think that this shoe for me felt best when I got to a certain speed and just stayed there. And then once you did, you could just lock in and go and the miles were effortless. Really enjoyed running in this shoe. I'd say that the Pegasus and the Vomero 14 do overlap quite a bit in terms of the type of runner and the type of runs that they are best suited for. But if you can only have one of the two, I would still go with the Pegasus 35 because I think it has a little bit more variety, versatility, and range in it. The other big thing for me that was different other than the React foam is the heel in this shoe. Uh, there's tons of padding and it's kind of weird in that in this design, they have really made the cut around the ankle really, really low. And so that's something that was very noticeable to me. Uh, I'm not the kind of person that needs higher ankle support or higher lateral support. So I didn't notice if that had any effect uh, in terms of the stability of the shoe, but I definitely felt it as I run. Even after 100 miles putting the shoe on a whole bunch of times, I still notice it every time that this angle is really low cut. And there's like different sets of pillows built into the padding in this heel cup area. And it, I definitely feel it every time I run in it. It's almost as if they've got like cushions that kind of are pushing in to wrap around your Achilles in kind of a strange way. Uh, I'm not one that has a lot of Achilles rubbing or heel rubbing or ankle rubbing. So none of that stuff really bothered me, but definitely I noticed it. It was certainly a feel that I couldn't ever ignore. For me, it was one of the, the signature things about this shoe uh, that I knew that I was running in a Vomero 14 because of the way that heel fits. So for a lot of you guys in 2018 that complained about the loose heel or the heel slipping or you felt like your heel was popping out of the shoe in your Nike running shoes, 
This goes a completely opposite direction, and this is something that I think you should definitely uh, give a try. In terms of wear and tear, I've got a little bit of salt on this shoe because I've got it a little bit wet uh, and I got it in through some snowy, slushy conditions. It held up really well. Because of the low cut and so much of your ankle is exposed, I wouldn't consider it really like a winter shoe, but the upper here is a little bit thicker, a little bit less breathable. So it did well in terms of just cold, dry temperatures. And the tread on the bottom, this tread pattern, very different from what I've seen before in the Pegasus that I'm used to. The lugs and the spacing, I think are really great for some winter conditions. So it kind of is a sleeper winter shoe in a little bit of a way, except for that ankle, that's the one part. I feel like if there's any real snow or accumulation, everything's gonna come in this way. But in terms of the tread, I really like it. The rubber's holding up exceptionally well. Part of that's probably because of the fact that I've got so many treadmill miles in this shoe. But overall, it's doing such a good job. It's hard to tell where there's anywhere on this shoe at all for me, and that's a little bit unusual. So I'm very pleased with how this is holding up. Uh, the React foam is just a real pleasure to run in, and it's also great to walk in. So uh, for me, if this is gonna be uh, high on my list, for whenever I travel and I'm trying to figure out just what's the one shoe that I can not only run in while I'm traveling for work, but also wear casually uh, while I'm there on the work trip as well. Uh, this is definitely a shoe that's gonna fit the bill. This black shoe, very kind of inconspicuous, and Kanina just looks like a shoe, uh, but it's got a little bit of flair at the end, which makes me happy, but also can serve a variety of functions. So, so definitely this is a shoe that's been a pleasant surprise for me, uh, a shoe that I find myself gravitating towards and really enjoying. If I do need to do something that's a longer distance, plus has a variety of paces involved, I'm still gonna reach more towards the Zoom Fly Flyknit because that has React as well, but instead of the Zoom Air pocket that the Vomero has, it's got the carbon fiber plate. So for something where I need to go long distances and mix up the paces, the Zoom Fly Flyknit is where I'm gonna go. If I need to go shorter distances and mix up paces, then the Pegasus 35 is where I would go. Uh, but for just your long, steady runs, uh, this is a really great option. If you find that the Pegasus 35 is uncomfortable, I'd say definitely give this shoe a try next as your everyday trainer. It's probably gonna fit the bill. Uh, they're very similar in use cases, but their rides are different enough that I feel like if you're one of the people that don't like the Pegasus, you're really gonna have your answer right here. So I've been really enjoying the shoe. Uh, it's been great to me. The weird collar, the extra short tongue here, uh, a little bit of padding in it makes it comfortable uh, without being too hot. And I didn't really notice any problem with how short the tongue was. Overall, it's just a really comfortable shoe, a shoe that's really easy to love. Those are my thoughts on the Vomero 14. I'd love to hear what you guys have thought. I know a lot of you guys are running in the shoe. Let me know how it's holding up for you. I'd love to talk to you guys down in the comments. But before I go, I want to talk about today's charity runner for the day. Today's charity runner for the day is Michael Lurigio. He's going to be running the London Marathon, uh, raising money for Sea Ability, a group that is working to build inclusive communities for people affected by sight loss, autism, and learning disabilities. So a great cause. Uh, I've donated 10 pounds to his fundraising efforts and I'll post a link in the description below in case you'd like to learn more. Every day I'm gonna to try to donate at least $10 to a different charity runner of the day. So if you are a charity runner or if you know a charity runner, send that fundraising information my way. I'd love to give that person $10 and spotlight at them at the end of a video uh, to show everyone else in the running community what you guys are all doing to make your communities better. So that's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Yo, what's going on?